Hey guys, founder of Ethical Property Partners here, Frank Flegg. So, let me talk to you about capital gains tax because here's what the government are thinking about and talking about. They are thinking, how can we get as much money into our coffers as quickly as possible because we've just spent a ton of money on COVID-19, quantitative easing, etc., etc. So, what can we do to get that money in? Well, let me tell you, the whispers on the grapevine is that capital gains tax is going up. They are talking about bringing it in line with income tax, which is massive. That's potentially a doubling or even a trebling or even more of your capital gains tax when you come to sell a property. And this could come in as early as next financial year. So this could be coming in in the, in the next few months of 2021. So this episode is all about what should you do? I've got three strategies for you. One of them a little bit controversial. The first strategy is I'll just stop selling. If I'm going to be taxed at 50 odd percent of the capital gain, then I'm not gonna sell, it's not worth it. If you bought a property for 100,000 pound 10 years ago and you wanna sell it this year, but now it's worth 200,000 pounds and the government wanna take 50,000 pounds or so, it might be 45, it might be 55, depending on your income tax bracket, then I'm not gonna sell. That's just crazy in my opinion. I'll keep hold of the cash flow each month, keep that coming in, and I'll refinance instead. Because if I bought, let's call it 100,000 pound property for 75,000 pounds 10 years ago, I've got a mortgage for, at that time, maybe 50,000 pounds to buy the property, and now it's worth 200,000 pounds, I can just refinance. I can refinance at 150,000 pounds now quite easily, maybe a bit more if you can find an 80% loan to value lender, but at 75%, you'll be able to get 150,000 pound lending. That gives me, if I've got a, a 50,000 pound mortgage already, that gives me 100,000 pounds in my pocket, and I've still got the ongoing cash flow, and I've got the ongoing capital growth from that property. Now, be careful, if you bought the property for 75,000, you can only offset 75,000 pounds of the mortgage interest against income on that property. So don't think that you can offset the whole 150,000 pounds. I'm just telling you how I will approach this if capital gains tax goes up next year. So the first thing is I'll probably stop selling properties. I sold a lot this year because it was a favorable environment. Prices were going up. It looks as though we're gonna have a buying spree in 2021, 2022. So I wanted to build my war chest. However, if the environment changes, my strategies will change and I'll stop selling. Secondly, I have been advocating buying into property companies, so SPV, special purpose vehicles, which are basically just limited companies for the purpose of buying a property for the last few years. I will definitely be advocating that more and more moving forwards if capital gains tax goes up significantly. And the reason for that is there is no capital gains tax in limited companies, so you don't pay any. You do pay corporation tax. So corporation tax is currently at 19%. It might creep upwards, but we're not gonna see that double overnight. The government want businesses to do well, they want businesses to grow, they want them to employ more people, <laughs> ideally paying their salaries rather than the government paying their salaries through furlough. And so we're not going to see, in my opinion, corporation tax jump massively. It might creep upwards. So you can buy your property into a company, let's use the same example, a £100,000 value property that was bought for £75,000 10 years ago, and now today it's worth £200,000. If you sell that in a company, there's no capital gains tax at all, so even if that's at 40% or whatever, you'll just pay your 19% capital gains tax. Now what an accountant will tell you is, whoa, 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 you're not taking into account income tax when you take the money out of the company. You're not taking into account your dividend tax when you take the money out of your company. My argument is, I'm not needing to take all the money out of all these different SPVs. If I've sold a property because it was the right time to sell it and I want to buy more property, I'm always buying more property, I won't take the money out and be taxed twice on it. I'll just buy my next property in that company. So I'll use that. If I bought it for £75,000, I've got a mortgage of £50,000, I've sold it for £200,000. There's 150k in that company. Yes, I'll pay 19% corporation tax, but then I've got the rest of it to go buy my next property or to put down on the, as a deposit on multiple properties. So the first thing 
I'm gonna do if capital gains tax goes up is I'm gonna stop selling stuff. The second thing is I'm gonna only invest through limited companies unless they're extenuating circumstances and that way I can still sell stuff without paying capital gains tax. Now I told you there was a cheeky one, a third one, and it is a bit controversial, but bear with me because I wanna give you the full picture. My dad emigrated about four years ago. He didn't do it for tax reasons. Um, in fact, he doesn't own any property um, at all now in, in the UK, but he did it because he wanted to retire overseas. He fancied a different um, quality of life, a different lifestyle uh, entirely in fact, and he wanted to retire somewhere um, that, that worked for him, that ticked a lot of his personal boxes. However, I got interested in this and started looking into tax if you decide to retire elsewhere. And I was quite surprised to find out that for many countries, they will not tax property sales, capital growth on properties, outside of that country. So if you decide to go somewhere else for your retirement and you live there for five years, that's the key, you have to be there for five years. This is my understanding. I'm not an international tax expert either. If I do retire somewhere else and spend five years there, after those five years, HMRC in the UK say, and you can go check this with them, this isn't any dodgy offshore stuff. This is legitimate, you can check with them. They will tell you that they no longer will tax your capital gains. So if you've got that 50,000 pound property that is now worth 200,000 pounds, but you've lived in another country for over five years, HMRC will not tax you on that capital gain. So you can sell that property for 200,000 pounds. It costs you 75,000 pounds when you bought it. You've got 125,000 pound capital gain. You will not be taxed on that capital gain whatsoever unless the country that you're living in taxes it. But I've discovered that there are actually many tens of countries around the world who have a zero tax on overseas capital gains. So really interesting that if capital gains goes through the roof, you might think, well, actually I'm emigrating here anyway. I'm gonna be spending five, 10 years in this country. After I've spent five years there, I, I'll sell some of my portfolio and benefit from not paying any capital gains tax. Just a thought, I would never suggest that you move somewhere just to save some tax, just like I would never suggest you do a deal, a property deal, based on the tax. You do the deal first and then you look at how can I mitigate my tax legally by following the rules. The same applies here in my opinion. If you're going to retire somewhere anyway, perhaps check out the, the tax um, situation because it may mean that you can sell those properties and avoid paying capital gains tax entirely. Guys, if you've enjoyed this episode, then do hit the notification bell. You'll then be told the next time an episode comes out click the subscribe button for the same reason. And if you've got any questions, any comments whatsoever, pop them below and um, especially any suggestions for new topics. So if you want me to talk about a particular aspect of sophisticated property investing, then pop it in the box below and I will happily look at doing an episode about that. Until next time, happy investing.